Thank you for taking a quick look at this video. In this video, we're gonna play around with some cloth physics. And if you want to get access to the project files of this video and all my other videos, I highly suggest you go to my Patreon. So let's start this tutorial. Let's create these models. So they are very simple and we are actually going to use the default cube for once. So let's go to the top view and let's duplicate with Shift D this cube. Right click so it snaps back and then do G X two. Now select them both, Shift D, right click, G Y two. And here we have four of these cubes next to each other. And we want to scale some of them a little bit up, right? So let's select this one, go into top to edit it and make sure you have the face selection selected. Select this top face and move this a bit up with GZ. Do the same for this one, GZ. Make it a bit higher. And this in the back is going to be the highest one. Awesome. Now, because we scaled them, we need to apply the scale as well. So these three, select them, Ctrl A and apply scale. You need to apply the scale, otherwise the modifiers might not work as intended later on. Let's select this cube and add some modifiers. Go into the modifier properties, add modifier, and let's add a bevel. Let's zoom in, and here we can see that it bevels these outer edges. We can put the segments a little bit up and then make the amount a little bit lower. Around here seems to be nice. Right click, shade smooth. The thing is, we have a nice smooth cube and the bevels are okay, but you can see that the shading is not um, yeah, really what we want. So how do we change this? Well, we are just gonna add a subdivision surface so Blender has a bit more geometry to work with. In our subdivisions, you can see we have a levels viewport, which is one and a render. So if we render this, it is actually shown at two. So if we put this levels viewport at two, we can kind of see what our render will actually look like. If you're happy with this, you can go back to one just so your computer will not slow down. Now, we will select these three, which have no modifiers. Then as last, the one that does have a modifier, Ctrl L and copy the modifiers. As you can see, the modifiers are copied and now we need to right click and also do shade smooth on these bad boys. And as last model, we want to create a floor, right? So just add a plane, scale this all the way up, and that is our floor. You could see that these cubes are actually inside the floor. So you could move the floor down or select all of these cubes and just do GZ1. And now they're perfectly on top. Now we need to create the materials. And for the materials, we first need some good lighting because let's go to shading. We can see that if we go inside the viewport shading rendered, first of all, we don't really have that good of a lighting here. And second of all, I personally like to work with cycles, especially when you want to create something like glass or plastic in this case. So device is going to be GPU. Now, our lighting is not really that impressive, right? So let's first put our camera into position and then we can start to play around with the light. You can move the camera just by selecting it and clicking on G and moving it like this. Or you can click on zero, which brings you into the camera view then go and drag this out, go into view, camera to view, and now wherever we are looking at, our camera will follow, right? So if we're just gonna look at here, something like this might look more interesting. So now, if you turn this off, we cannot like by accident move our camera anymore, but you can see that the camera now has moved in this position. So when we want to move our lights around, I still want to see from a camera view. If you go to the tab animation, you can see that here we have our camera view already set and here I can still move around. So that is kind of handy, right? So let's make sure that this one is in the rendered view port shading so we can also see our light. I'm going to delete this light and add a plane. This plane is going to be our first light. So let's change this timeline to the shading editor and create a new material for this plane. This material is not a principal shader, so just delete this and add in a mission shader. Drag this emission shader into the surface and now this light will actually cast light on our scene. Perfect. So this is going to be our key light. So we can kind of move it here and we can rename this material to key light. Now we're going to duplicate this 
rotate around, make it a bit bigger, and this light is going to be the fill light. So duplicate this material, rename this to fill light, and what the fill light should do, it should lighten up the shadows a little bit, but not make them as bright as the key light, right? So I'm going to make sure that this is way lower. Uh, let's look here, something like this. So shadows and lights are just as important, but you don't want the shadows to be too dark so you can actually not see anything, right? And what I personally also like to do a lot is just hide these planes, right? So now they have, don't have names. Normally I would also name them. So this will be the fill light. And this one will be the key light. And then I would hide the fill light to just see what the key light is doing and then hide the key light to see what my fill light is doing. Because every light in your scene should actually do something, right? Otherwise you're just adding lights for the sake of it. Now, I also don't want them to be in my uh, camera view. So I might move this a bit backwards. Let's look at my key light here. That seems to be fine. So this seems to be okay. And if you want some more realistic reflections, you could also add an HDRI map. So if you go into world here in the shader editor, you can add an environment texture and you can open an HDRI of your choice. This one will be in the description down below. So open image. So this will create more realistic reflections because then you can actually see maybe the door or a window or whatever. Let's select this floor and let's scale this up. So it's all the way visible inside our camera view. And this is some decent lighting. Now we can start to create some materials as well. So for the materials, I will go back to shading. Make sure your rendered viewport shading is on and we can start to create some materials. So this cube here is going to have a material, right? And we can rename this to cube material and then let's do 001 enter. What happens here is we can change the color and you can see that all of them change color, right? Because all of them now have the same material applied to it. That is okay. But what for colors are we going to use? And I personally go to a website like colors.co. And when you go to colors.co, you have this as the main page. You do not have to create an account and go to explore trending palettes. Now you can choose a nice color combination. So let's say I like these here. What you can do is you can just click on any of these codes here and they will be copied to your clipboard. So if you go back to Blender, you can go into the base color, go to the hex code because it's a hex code and then paste this number in there and your material now has that color applied to it. The roughness I think should be fine, 0.4. Maybe you want to put it to 0.3 or if you want more roughness in there, you of course put it higher. I'm going to do exactly the same for all these other colors. So I'm gonna select this one, click on duplicate. And now what I can do is go back to my color palette, maybe select this color in this case, and then paste this, enter. You can do the same for every single one of them. And of course, also the floor should have a color. So we just click on new, select a new color, maybe the darkest one in this case, and then we can do base color, control V, bam. And now we have these awesome colors and we have a color palette that works nicely together. Now as last, we of course need to create our plastic, right? Our little plastic wrap or whatever it is that falls over these cubes. So let's go into solid viewport shading Make sure we add a plane. So shift A, add a plane, move this up and then scale it up as well. We want it to fall on top of these. So make sure if you go into wireframe mode, it is actually on top of them. So somewhere around here. And we want to also create some extra subdivisions because this geometry is just not enough for a cloth modifier. So right click, subdivide. Once you go into the subdivide here, you can choose the number of cuts. So this can go way higher. And it can even go to like 80 in this case. Now let's go into the physics properties and add a cloth physics modifier. We need a timeline to actually play this. So I'm going to drag this one a little bit down, add a timeline and start to play this. You can see that it just falls through here. 
That is because we need to also add some extra collisions because this cloth is now not colliding with anything. So select all of these models and add a collision to every single one of them. Let's play this again. You can see that it falls nicely on top of here and actually collides with them. This cloth is a little bit too small, so go back to frame zero, if yours is also too small, and scale this up. It's all dependent on your scene, of course. So let's play this again, and you can see that now I have a way better effect and it actually looks quite cool. So if you're happy with this, you can put the quality steps a little bit higher. In some cases, these models might actually um, go through each other, so make sure the quality steps are actually a little bit higher, maybe seven. And then we want to bake this. Also, if you want the quality of your cloth to be even higher, you could also add an extra subdivision surface. Make sure you put it before the cloth modifier and then re-bake this, okay? So now we have a higher cloth density. I'm not gonna do it right now just because I want this video to be a bit quicker, but that is always possible. So let's bake this cloth modifier. So go back into the physics properties, go down to cache and bake. We only need to bake the amount that we're actually gonna render, okay? So I think maybe 100 frames or 120 frames. Then also put this end at 120 and bake this. And now you don't have to re-render this all the time. This bake is just here and that's it, right? So I can just move it here, 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 here. It doesn't need to recalculate it. Awesome. So this is the cloth modifier. Let's go back to our camera view and make sure that this material, this cloth, actually looks like plastic. So right click, shade smooth, first of all. We could also add a subdivision surface after a cloth modifier to make it a bit more smooth. But I personally also want a solidify modifier, right? Make it a bit more thick. This could go in between the cloth and the subdivision surface. And then you want to make sure that it's not too thick, okay? So a little bit is okay, just don't make it too thick. So 0 0.002 is probably fine enough. Create a new material. This is going to be our plastic material. And in all honesty, we're just gonna use a glass BSDF. So let's look at our rendered viewport shading and you can see what this glass does. It looks quite like plastic, right? When you want to create a plastic, it is probably also handy to create another glossy shader and a mix shader. Mix these two together and add a layer weight node with the facing into the fact. And now I want to control this a bit better with my RGB curves. And as you can see, um, our reflection is quite dull and that is because the glossy BSDF has a roughness of 0.5. So let's put it at 0.01, something like that. This is a bit extreme and that is why we also added an RGB curves. We can move this a bit down and now it only works on these outer edges. Also what I really enjoyed about this render is that I put the roughness of this glass shader a little bit up. So inside of here, it actually kind of diffuses these uh, yeah, models. So 0.2 or 0.3 I did. Go to zero again. And this is our nice camera view. And this is everything that you need to know to create this animation. Just render it out and I hope to see some of these renders on Instagram. Just tag me in there and I can see them. I see you guys in the next video.